to the channel fishing freaks another day in the great outdoors got to love it we got a couple hours so some rain is coming in and i thought why don't we just do a little catfish dangle right now uh oftentimes during springtime bass fishing when i start to catch catfish on spinner baits and things like that throwing up in the shallows i know they're moving up to spawn and do their things right now catfish are are definitely doing this so this is a great time to do uh, bank fishing for catfish uh, and specifically I'm talking about channel cats and you can catch them on stink bait I don't know what it is about stink bait it's like little candies for them it just stinks to high heaven uh, right now I'm rigging up a pack by the way plug for the uh, the new tackle storage you can pick these up at guggensquad.com this is our backpack we also have the totes uh, we have tons of different uh, tackle organization systems now, so uh, you guys go check them out. And I got to tell you about a sale that we're having. The sale is going to be going on at the end of this month. It's only a few days. I think it ends uh, the 1st of May. But uh, we're doing, I believe it's 30% off all our baits. You can also use my promo code, uh, LFG, and save another 10% on top of that. So if you guys want to get geared up, try out some of the new bags and gear or just anything, load up on baits, great time to do it. If you guys have never fished for channel catfish, something that I'm going to recommend, I'm not a big cat fisherman, but I like to use these, these little sponge holder dealios. They come in various shapes and forms, but you can use a variety of stink baits. It's got freaking hair on the inside. Look at this stuff, absolute disgust. I don't know if you guys can fully fully get in there on that hair, but uh, anyway, it's disgusting. This is Danny's, Danny's Catfish Punch Bait. God, it just gave me, uh, just had to hold it back a little bit right there. And you don't necessarily need really heavy gear for uh, catching channel cats. They don't get really huge like the flatheads and the blue cats. These are uh, 3 8 ounce, I have some quarter ounce, little egg weights and the line is already in this sponge material. So keys to catfishing, good bait. Have you a couple of different rods out, that way you have multiple activity because it's not like you're casting and retrieving. We're just sitting down and then comfort is key. And I happen to have a, a nice pad right here. This is actually my hunting pad. I use this for you know, sitting, I uh, use it for bracing things like that, but it is, uh, it's just perfect to throw in a little backpack and use as a shoreline sitter. Today is our family night Sunday dinner. We do it with my parents and, uh, you know, this is kind of a challenge here today because my dad was like, hey, I know you're going catfishing. Should I go ahead and get some salmon uh, just in case, you know, you don't catch them? So, dad, challenge accepted. <laughs> Made it down to the water. It's not as windy as I was anticipating. So that's fantastic. I think uh, the weights that we have we're gonna be able to get away with with the, with the drift. And it is springtime Texas blue bonnets are going crazy down here. It's an awesome little spot. So I'm just gonna set up a couple poles right here. I'm gonna cast them out 20, 30 yards, not that far, and we're just gonna sit. We're gonna sit on our bottom and wait for that. So these are my two rigs that I've got going here. I got one mono, one braid. Sensitivity is not really gonna be a thing. We just want that rod to start taking off. Usually the catfish on the stink bait, they just, they eat it. Um, so you definitely wanna have a good pair of pliers around, uh, long pair of pliers. So I got some pliers in, in the pack. So I've got myself a stick, got our stink bait here. For this rig right here, so I've got a bobber stop. I've got a uh, 3 8 ounce egg weight barrel swivel and this is probably 20 pound uh, mono that is that is on this little uh, uh, sponge rig comes with that so just wrap that through the uh, the swivel and you're good to go it's like a little Carolina rig for bass if you guys have kids I highly recommend this it's very easy in fact Jimmy caught our first catfish the other day doing this so stink bait stick in there you're going to submerge submerge this in here I'll try to angle it so you guys can see completely submerge it 
actually is not the perfect type holder for this particular bait, but that's okay. It'll work. And you just want to pull it out kind of at, at an angle so it doesn't all come off. And if you get a big old clump of extra, that's fine. It's going to be an attractant. Then we're going to come over here and cast it out. If you have a little bow in your line, that's fine. Catfish will take it out, but I like to throw it out there, let it settle on the bottom, and just come barely tight. Not enough to where I'm dragging that weight across the bottom, so you don't want to get hooked on anything. Another thing I'm seeing is shad right here on the bank that are, uh, I don't know if they're spawning or whatever, maybe beginning to spawn. That's gonna bring in catfish as well. Everything is gonna be feeding on those shad. So we got the wind um, pushing some bait over here. So similar to bass, it's a good thing. Let's get our other rod rigged out and then uh, get our seat sit right here. That's the best part. Chilling, wait for that bite. Went ahead and built me a little bite shelf here. My bite indicator shelving unit. Just a piece of driftwood put up in a tree. But it's perfect. We could put like another two or three poles right here if I wanted to. It's something you're gonna see when you're catfishing on a lake are these little taps in your rod. These little taps are often just waves uh, moving in line. They catch the line. So disregard those. But when you see a hard like whack. That's that's a catfish bite. So usually hit it a few times and then they start just pulling. You really don't even need to set the hook at that point. They they have it. They have it down there. So you just kind of reel into them. But I'm gonna set the camera back here. Get my pad out and uh, ooh, ooh ooh hang on hang on. That looked a little suspect right there. Oh, that was getting a bite. We got one getting a bite right here. Take it. Yep, it's biting it. Take it. There you go. There you go. Got him. Oh, that goat came off. Probably just gonna have to rebate that one. Might have been a hair too early picking it up. go guys look at that it's actually a blue cat it's got down the hatch man they just torch this thing down to the throat this is what I was saying you need a pair of pliers if you're gonna go do this because a lot of times they just they just take it oh my goodness can't believe I got that out okay now we are going to pop our stringer, the old meat necklace, 
fish number one. All right, put him back in the water. Actually, never seen that before. A gar came up and uh, and grabbed my line off the surface. I was like curious about it. Probably something that would never happen with mono. Oh, that's a light. That's a light. Come on. Keep tapping it. So far so good guys, we've got two on the stringer, you know, one's little, one's big, and in Texas, in most of our lakes, you can keep uh, 25 catfish in any combination. Uh, you got to check your specific regulations for each lake, uh, for example, like out here on your flatheads, I think you can only keep five a day and they have to be at least 18 inches long, um, and for most of the state. You can keep 25, but only 10 can be uh, over 20 inches, I think it is. So we might have one that's over 20 inches right now, but I doubt it. So we got a blue, a blue cat and a channel cat. And there's some hybrid species that occur as well. But uh, the blue cats are gonna be more gray. They're typically bigger, channel catfish, smaller. Um, and they've got these little like spots, usually on their lower half. So I actually got almost had a double right there, but uh, one just came off. I don't know. It was tapping it. Just didn't really take it. it just pulled off. The other one I, I I got. That lime's sitting out there for a while. So two fresh, two fresh stinkies. Hopefully we'll have two fresh caddies. Give you guys a view from my seat. Pretty good view, although we do have some rain coming in. This is definitely when I'm gonna get a bite, just not paying attention, talking to you guys. These fish are in, you know, maybe six, seven feet of water. It's it's not that deep at all. I'm on the, the shallow side of the lake and, you know, it's not like I'm fishing next to a channel or anything. It's just this time of year, this is when they're coming up. Take it. Take it, buddy.
Got him when he was kind of playing games with it. I had to switch out to some new bait holders because one of them broke. I think it was because I had had it down the throat of that first fish. There we go. And then uh, the other one, the fish just took it. Took my sponge. You know, the most important part. So that's a really good channel cat right there. It's gonna eat nice and juicy. That's our third fish on the string. Ooh, trying to slap me. Too. I've definitely had the bites all ready to, uh, to get her done for the family meal. That last one felt good too. I've had two come off that have felt really great. I've done that steady pull off instead of that tap, tap, tap craziness. So I don't know. I, I, I think I did perfect on that one. I let them just slowly take the rod down, came up. I was just doing a lot of twisting. Pulled the hook. Happens sometimes. But Got fresh bait out again. We're gonna try to get two more. Two more kitty cats. one on. Oh my gosh, it came off. You gotta be Alright, we're gonna do a Hail Mary. We're going to take this thing off. I have one other noodle from my other little catfish kit. By the way, y'all, catfish have very sharp spines right here. This is how you want to grab them. These little ones can stab you very easily. Um, they'll lock out this dorsal spine. You want to grab them right, right on that back and then put your fingers under here. And they kind of lock those fins out. And that way they, they can't spike up and, and get you. So grab them while they're locked out. And uh, I'm going to throw those cat bags. Too, too, too tiny. Pumpy girl. Pumpy girl.
Oh my god, it was huge. It took my line, broke me off. Got me hung around a stump. Get my fanny spanked by some catfish out here today. Now I'm just out of rigs, I'm out of everything. God, that one was big. Clutch fish, I needed it. Took everything from me. Regretting my, my 12 pound <laughs> mono decision. I went all the way up to 12. I didn't think about all the cover I was gonna have to deal with. I'm out, I'm out of ammo here. Oh, and wait, what is this? I just found the no sponge rig as well. So, hey, we're about to get two back in the water. Don't like the no sponge, but it's better than one. Just one. surging. I need heavy movement. All right, I think this fish has got it now. Oh, just let go. This is close. It's being the provider of the day, you know. Being a winner, coming home with the bread. Just got the text. My parents wouldn't got salmon anyway, so <laughs> it's like they didn't have faith in me. Next time I go, I'm going to bring more rigs. This is fun. A lot of action and, um, you know, just an hour and a half and still got fish to eat. Catfish helper. Yeah. <gasps> They're kind of slimy. But they are. Very slimy. That was a big one. That is a big one. That's a blue cat. Blue cat. He's kind of blue, gray. The other ones are channel cats. Dropped the chewer yeah. in the catfish blue water. Ben, that's a party yeah, foul. That's a party foul. All right. We're going to put this ice on top of them. Here we go. So tomorrow night we're gonna eat those, okay? Yeah. So that is gonna be it for today, guys. Uh, if you want to stay tuned, to see how to uh, clean a catfish and blacken it and do the, the grits that I'm talking about, um, Stephanie and I will show you how to do all that. It's a really, really tasty way to eat any kind of fish, but uh, catfish is a little firmer and I really like it that way. Right? You do too? Yeah, you love it back I do. <laughs> do you like it more baked? Um, yeah, I like it. I like it in a taco. You like taco? Yeah, it's just a... I like fish tacos. You get a good, firm catfish. I don't know. I mean, I, I like blacking it up. But so. the grits definitely... Mm -hmm. I, that's good with any kind of fish. So Stephanie will show you how to do that. Again, catfishing, super simple. You don't need much. They live just about everywhere. It's super fun. If I could change one thing about today, uh, I would have bumped up my line. I know I said eight and 10 pound tests and I, I got to the lake and I was like, eh, it's kind of low, but I should be okay. And I didn't think about the obstructions and everything like that and catching more sizable catfish. I had uh, a couple of catfish I think that were over five pounds that uh, they just took me for a ride. And one broke my line, um, the other one was just really pulling off with it, so you really have to think about that when you're, when you're catfishing. It just depends on what kind of catfish you're going after. 
Subscribe right here for more outdoor action. Smash that like button for catching kitty cats. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Godspeed.